my gosh, Sunrise is getting big. And you know Burmese pythons are a absolute passion for me. And they are a huge part of things here at the Reptarium from the educational standpoint. Not only when we're open to the public are people like, oh my God, Sunrise is so amazing. And all our Burmese are, but they're the puppy dogs, right? They're giant snakes, but they are so absolutely docile. And Sunrise is certainly a crowd favorite. And by the way, welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. The fact is Burmese pythons are great educational animals. Of course, Jeffrey, the hypo granite Burmese python here has been absolutely wonderful. Whether he goes out to zoo to use, whether people come here for tours or where we're open to the public. And the thing you guys may not know is that the Reptarium, the one big initiative beyond 3.0, of course, is the fact that we are expanding our educational side. I mean, it is important for us to get out there and really teach people on a gorilla marketing standpoint, right? Person by person. And Burmese pythons are a great way to do it. Right now, we of course have Sunrise and of course we have Jeffrey. And then of course we have this little monkey here, Marshmallow, the ivory Burmese python. That's absolutely gorgeous. Of course, he's really cool because he's not quite that big yet. Uh, and that is cool because you can pull him out for kids. The fact is, is that we are really pushing the educational side. And as the world kind of returns to normal, hopefully pretty soon, we're gonna hope that we'll be able to do school events and camps and libraries and all those things. Of course, right now we have Jay the edutainer as our main educator. And we actually just brought on Aislinn, another animal educator. And we wanna bring on maybe one or two by the end of the summer. So the fact is, is that these animals are going to be going out a lot and really only having three Burmese isn't enough. Which brings me to my point, we are about to get a box with another animal ambassador. So in this box here, hopefully we'll be the next animal ambassador when it comes to Burmese pythons here. It's a little guy right now, but it will get as big as Sunrise and even bigger eventually. So let's go ahead, open this little monkey up. And you know, it's pretty cool to always get new stuff. But lately, we've been getting a lot of new stuff, which is really cool. Again, kind of gearing up number one for the educational side, gearing up number two for 3.0. So these are all really amazing things. And this is my little new monkey here. And again, I wanted all my Burmese to be different, right? I don't want two albinos. I want two granites, but I want two whatever. I want them to all be different so that they have very unique personalities. And oh my gosh! I don't know that I've ever actually seen one of these in person. I've seen tons of pictures, but wow, this thing is unbelievable. And of course, this is just a hypo fur. Now, you know Jeffrey is a hypo granite Burmese python. This happens to be a hypo without the granite, right? So the hypo is an incomplete dominant. If you breed these two together, you get the ivories like marshmallow. But of course, Jeffrey is a recessive granite on top of it. So this is just the incomplete dominant. And I'll be honest with you, this thing is so much nicer than I expected it to be. I mean, look at that. The pattern, the color. Oh my goodness. This is incredible. And you know, little berms like this can sometimes be a little feisty. As a matter of fact, that's how I ended up getting Jeffrey, right? My buddy sent it to me because it was about this size and it would just bite the heck out of him constantly. But this little dude is doing good. Now, this is a female. Again, want a female because it's going to get big. Jeffrey and Marshmallow are males. They're going to stay a little bit smaller. So this should be one day a giant 17 or 18 foot snake, much like Sunrise will be eventually. So again, I need some help, guys. I need a name. Hypogram of Burmese, female. What should I name this beauty? Again, as it gets bigger, this is going to be a big part of our educational outreach. So, wow, that thing is absolutely a ripper. Last week, we went and hung out with Savannah from Gatorland. We went down to Chicago. We did a ton of crazy stuff with gators. So now I'm feeling super ballsy. Can I say that? I'm going to give my girl Pepper here some love. Oh, man. I'm going to try to feed her this little mouse right here and see how it goes. Oh no! I got scared. Jay, Hold on. Jay. Okay. Ah, oh, Mike, you gotta be quick. No hesitation. There you go. Get it, Jay. Come on. I can't Come on. Okay, guys. So I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna teach some of the stuff that Savannah actually taught me. Come on, get down there, man. Jay, oh. dude. What's Jay. wrong with this gator? Jay. Yeah. Oh my God. Why doesn't Pepper want to eat? Because you're driving her nuts. Pepper. Alright, salt got it. Yay! Salty. And there you have it. That's why I work at the Reptarium, not Gatorland. So I was told the cupcake shed, but I'll be honest with you, I don't see the shed in here anywhere. She looks like she's ready to eat though, I can tell you that much. I'm wondering if it's underneath her possibly. And there is the shed. Alright, ooh, this looks like it's nice and rolled up. Ooh, this is going to be a good one. There we go. Ugh. Perfect shed. I mean, this looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and unroll this, but you know, Jay, the edutainer, is so obsessed with trying to get me about who shed everything is. What do you say we go see if he can figure out who shed this is? Jay, 
Oh, this is too easy. Too Jay, easy. What, what, who's this from? This is too easy. If you don't get this, I, I'm not even going to talk to you the rest of the day. The rest of the day? Yeah. Look at how easy that well, is. You can see the pattern. You know what my favorite snakes are, right? Exactly. Yeah, we know. This is cupcake. This is cupcake. It was just too easy. Was too easy. I got to get it. I, just because I'm a professional. Yeah, no, it's just it's too easy. <laughs> I, I'm going to keep trying. Going through all the different animals, putting my breeding groups together, I've got a few things that I am excited about for this season uh, that I wanted to show you guys. First of all, we raised up a bunch of new scaleless Texas rats. So we're going to have a lot of these guys this year. New colors. These guys are super nice. Last year was a little bit of slow year. This year we should produce some really good numbers of some really beautiful specimens, much like this really red one here. I've also got some that are more yellow and stuff like that. So I'm excited about those. This one is an oldie that we finally got back into and I've got these guys up to size is our gray banded kings. So we've actually got a few pair of these that are breeding this year. Again, super excited. We used to produce a lot of these back in the day. It's been a while. So definitely looking forward to these. Uh, one that I'm going to have to make sure to not let Brian see too many because he's going to want to keep them all, but we're not. We'll be selling some, don't worry. So we've got a few new scaleless corn snakes that are up to size too. This is a beautiful albino one. This is a nice, beautiful female. Can't wait to pair her up with some things, see what we get. These guys are really cool, much like the Texas rats. When you take the scales away, not only does it seem to intensify and change the color, uh, but the pattern as well. So you got that and then you add the different color mutations. These things are just super crazy and it's always fun to see what you get patching out of these clutches. And so a fan favorite that I'm sure a lot of people are wondering is where's Carol? Well, here she is. She's feisty and ready to go. It is my goal that no males are lost this season to her. I've got some bigger, bulkier males that I'm definitely gonna try to breed to her. Maybe size was the problem. These other males maybe were too tiny. So uh, Carol, you behave and I'm hoping for little to no losses. I think that Nova might be ready to get fed. What do you think? You know, every day we have to feed bug feeders and Mike's about to do that. So it's always fun to see these little monkeys like Nova eating. Trachea almost folded. What are you guys doing? Dude, I almost got my trachea collapsed. No! Oh, bad. No! <coughs> no! Okay! <coughs> Sorry, I thought you were okay. Dude! Dude, you've yes. almost let me die like that so many times. I, my snake's way bigger than Sunfire. I know, fire. dude! But honestly, that was worse than any choke I've ever had. No, no, no! There you go. Step, Step one, ice water. Step two, face red. Step three, funeral. Oh wow, is he coming straight to us? He is actually, I think no, so. He'll run out on you. Come on. Oh, my you God. You got him? God. You got him. Bro. Oh. What happened? You did not <laughs> want to yeah, no. be held. I, you don't even know what happened. Oh. That's the good stuff. Wow. I don't understand why he was trying to kill run you. Away so much. I don't know. I'm sorry, guy. You gotta stroke him a little bit. Give you a couple head strokes. Look, he's closing his eyes. 
I mean, the work that we have done with him actually uh, yeah, has all been tremendous. Since we've been handling Sriracha, and we know, wait, which one's which? That's Tabasco. Okay, since we've been handling Tabasco, Sriracha actually, we think is wanting to come down more. So, we're gonna go try to give her a couple strokes. And although it might look a little hectic, this is exactly how our training with Tabasco went also. Tabasco at one point was exactly like this. Now honestly, I'm just trying to calm down because these nails are like razors. And it does hurt. It does hurt. But my uncle told me not to be a B-word, so I'm not going to be. <laughs> our lives are a lot different than a lot of you guys. Obviously, my parents own a reptile zoo, and you guys work at a reptile zoo. And, you know, these new, have you seen the new temperature guns that they use at the stores? Right? It's very strange because... Since I'm a monitor, I like handling the monitors, I have to tell them that I don't cut. I pull up my wrist thing, I show them, I'm like, I don't cut. And uh, it's just something that you guys don't have to deal with. So uh, it's not all just sunshine and roses. Let's hope that little monkey becomes a great animal ambassador. Down below, let me know what you think its name should be. It's a girl, of course, and she's gonna be a big part of our future. If you enjoyed this video and you like unboxing, here's a playlist of me unboxing tons of stuff. You can subscribe to my podcast channel right over here. Literally like 10,000 subscribers over here, away from three million. Hit that subscription button, turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.